Well, we're back alive, and we have uh, Senator Brian Campion, um, Chair of House Ed Senate Education, excuse me, um, and they have uh, provided us, and it's on our webpage, a rewrite of Section 6, and uh, which is the Intercollegiate Sexual Harm uh, Sexual Prevention Council. Um, so, Senator Campion, you want to go through? I, I'm assuming sure. the Education Committee will be offering the amendment on the floor. Thanks, Senator Sears. Yes, and uh, thanks for having me. And uh, I'm glad uh, Michelle Childs is here. What I would just like to say, and then I'll stick around. I'd like Michelle to walk through it and then take questions as she she goes through it. But the short of it is, yes, we will. We we did hear from the University of Vermont, the state colleges. Um, a sexual violence task force. We also had written testimony submitted. Uh, and we feel as though we're hoping, and we hope this committee agrees that this would be um, put into H-183. We did make uh, some changes. Uh, senators, uh, in particular, Lyons, Perslick, and Hooker were uh, took the lead on this and really worked and made some, some edits and some more I don't know if I'd say significant changes, but um, some additional changes that uh, Ms. Childs would walk, can walk you through. And I thought as we go through it, I'll be here to uh, address any questions that might come up with the language. How does that feel to you? Sounds good. I see we have four different colors. Yeah, I, I thought that was very helpful. Uh, it was great. Um, and so you have, I don't know if it matches the Senator's recommendations, if that's still on there, but Lyons is in yeah. yellow, virtually, okay, good. So- Perchick uh, is blue, Hooker is pink, and UVM yeah. is green. Is green, so. Probably it, it, I think. Green and gold. Should, yeah, it should have been catamount. Right. So if, uh, so yeah, I'm happy to stick around and, uh, it, Dan, you know, again, Michelle, why don't you, thank you, Senator Campion. Michelle, why don't you walk us through? Sure, and, and so you have a clean version and then you have that marked up. Is your preference for me to show you the marked up copy? Yeah, I, I like to see the marked up so we can see, are these the, the, the marked ones, like using the term harm prevention council, it, that's a change from the house version, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so that, that helps. Yeah, Senator yeah. Sears, we worked from the from the House version. Uh, right. that was so what these are changes was. from the House version. Yes. Yeah. What, what version is this, please? One. 3.1? 2. 3.1 3. 1 is the clean version that they voted. Um, I'm just showing you the, the, their markup process because Senator yeah. Sears wanted to kind of see that. Yes, very good. Uh, that's okay. helpful. So starting with the term harm. Sure. So we're so we're looking at draft 2.1 with the little coding co color coding. So you'll see um, uh, change the it previously said uh, sexual violence prevention council and uh, the members prefer to use the word harm because it's uh, a little broader. And when you're talking about the issues um, uh, that are involved here around uh, around camp campus sexual harm it's it can be it's involves harassment and other issues not just violence and so um i think in in looking at it it is a more appropriate term based on the the recommendations of the task force which is was to have this council um subsection a that's just a little technical thing so uh nothing substantive there the next change, so you'll see the, the section um, on uh, subdivision one is the members of the council. And yep. the next change is at the top of page three, adding a new subdivision two at the suggestion of uh, Senator Hooker, that to ensure a council that is reflective of Vermont's college campuses, appointing authority shall consider diversity when making appointments to the council. Um, so that's just kind of an aspirational statement. You know, some folks are gonna be more <laughs> Uh, tied into having to pick a specific person because of the, the type of appointment it is. So like the Title IX coordinator or something like that, it's going to be who it is, but it's to encourage uh, 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 diversity on the council. Great. So uh, subsection C on duties, um, this is just reworked a little bit. The first one uh, 
added, I think there was strong support for this and um, Sarah Lyon suggested it is that the first thing that they do is to review the recommendations from uh, the task force report and develop prevention solutions to sexual harm based on those recommendations. Uh, so um, Senator Perchlick had specifically really dug in and read the whole report and was looking at it and was interested in kind of looking at in deeper at some of those recommendations. And so what they wanted to that have the council do is to follow up on some of those. The next change is on subdivision four, and this is the language uh, that uh, I think Wendy Koenig submitted from UVM as a recommendation. And I think this committee saw it, I think Jeanette was the one who actually forwarded it to me. And so that is the exact language um, that UVM had proposed. And it's just a tweaking semantics, very, uh, in my sense, in my, opinion very minor but it would felt they felt more comfortable around that um, around sharing effective practices as opposed to best practices mm -hmm. the next change is the top of page four subdivision five um, Senator Lyons identify campus-wide activities publications and services that promote a campus culture of respect to support and the prevention of sexual violence and you know I'm looking at that and I'm thinking I should probably change that word to harm no. but, Okay. okay. Um, so, um, and then the next one is something that was a specific recommendation of the task force. And Senator Perchlick had uh, recommended that they this kind of be um, highlighted for, for the council to report back at the end of this year um, so that the legislature could, if it chose to take action on this particular thing, remember the council is only authorized to meet four times a year. Right. Um, and so there's a lot of things that they would be looking at, but this one is to recommend statutory protections um, by November 1st to ensure that survivors of sexual harm. Yeah, similar to the, to the good Sam that we just passed on. Exactly, exactly. Same exact concept is that you, if someone but This, been this would be, this would be for the universities, right? That they wouldn't be able to, or is it for crimes? Um, I'm uh, not sure. I could think the University of Vermont, for example, punish somebody who reported something? Right. For them, uh, I understand that, that under this, it would not, You maybe that's something that should be in that study. Should the university also protect from um, consequences. Whatever. Right. Well, let me let me look at the underlying task force report. My guess is that it's talking about any kind of repercussions, whether that be. Yeah. You know, uh, well, I would, you know, I would. I would. I. You know. I, we've got plenty of time because this bill still in appropriations need to be voted out. Hopefully today, but um, so you know, it doesn't need to be done right now. So I'll follow up on that. Um, kind of related to that subdivision six is, so the, the house version had the network calling the first meeting no later than uh, September 15th of this year. Right. But um, if you are requiring them to report to you by November 1st, then that really arguably only allows them to have one meeting prior to that. So probably, you know, it's their first meeting, setting their agendas and figuring that out. And so uh, they thought that if you have them meet for the first time, at least in the summer, then you can squeeze in a second meeting in the fall um, to, to ensure that they have adequate time to be able to recommend um, some suggestions on subdivision six. Okay. Um, and then, um, <clears throat> uh, effective date um, has those sections has the has the establishment of the um, of the of of the council um, and the appropriation for the staffing um, take effect on passage, and then the rest would, would continue to take effect on July 1st. Something I do want to mention, and Senator Sears mentioned, and I have to look at it, is that I think I made an error. So the, the House bill has a, has a seven-year sun because that's typically what they do for any kind of uh, mm -hmm. council board that's established. 
And so that would have been 2028. And I think I unintentionally, while working on something for someone else related to this, in 2025 so and i and i didn't highlight that or discuss that with senate ed and so that is three years shorter so it would have a four-year sunset instead of a seven-year sunset so can i, my, can I just, my apologies for that um, can i just clarify there yeah um S senator campion mm -hmm. um so did you all discuss changing the the sunset we did not discuss changing the sunset could could you do that? Absolutely. Could I, okay. Could I also comment on that? <clears throat> all the boards and commissions, now all the boards and commissions, we and I realize this is a task force or something else, but all the boards and commissions that we set up now have a five-year sunset unless um, they're just as reports do. I personally would favor 2025. Yeah, I, I, I like think it. it's it's sort of like RDAP. We came back and looked at it and said, yes, we should continue it, but at least it forces, you know, the legend. Hopefully, some of the, some of you will still be here in twenty twenty five. No, I I'm like happy. that change as well. I would just like Senate Ed to. Yeah, um, we're happy to uh, take another look at that this afternoon. The only the only question I have. Michelle is effect if you can make the appropriation effective on passage when the bill, if the bill were to pass before the budget, I, you need to check with Stephanie on that one. Okay. Because I am assuming it's in the House budget. It's not in the Senate budget at this point. And okay. if we made it effective on passage, I don't know if that's a problem or if it's nothing. I just I mean it's it's not it's for FY22 so the money wouldn't be happening until July 1st anyway. So Right. Um I'm happy to put that as July July 1st. Um Well, I think you probably check with Stephanie please. I don't know. Okay. Michelle, could you um scroll up to um the UVM language? Yep. Yeah, right there. Um, mm -hmm. So this uses the term tertiary violence. I, I am familiar with tertiary prevention, primary, secondary, tertiary prevention. And I'm wondering if that's a reference to prevention, because if you, unless there's a discussion of sexual violence in primary, secondary, and tertiary forms. Um, so I'm, I'm just flagging that. I, I've never heard tertiary violence, but I've often heard tertiary prevention, so. Um, I believe that language has been in there since introduction, and, I, and it hasn't really gotten any discussion until then about yep. that particular term so um we can flag that also if you want us to look at that would be great yep i don't, I don't know whether um is sarah you know sarah might be able to address that because yep. um some of this language you know came from came from the network yep yeah i think the uvm language was just on the Oh, um, it's, identify thought, and share the effective practices. It okay. They, they just made a couple small changes to that paragraph. In, either way, it's uh, and and I also don't understand if it is tertiary violence as opposed to a mix up with tertiary prevention. Why tertiary and not um, secondary, um, as well? So, um, you know, it's. It's referencing a a, a, a three-part classification scheme, which I've seen used for prevention efforts, um, with tertiary being long-term prevention. Um, so I just feel like we need clarification about violence versus prevention there, and um, why only tertiary, I guess. We can have Sarah Robinson into committee this afternoon 
okay. uh, and have a conversation with her if and, and then come back to all of you. That that would be great. I actually, you know, I I really appreciate Senator Ed's work on this. I think he did a terrific job. Um, and uh, so, Senator so. Campion, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. I, I agree. I think, um, you know, it addresses uh, several of my concerns. I think there's just a couple of technical questions outstanding. Can, can, uh, can I just ask a question on the tertiary uh, violence? So is that expanding it to all kinds of violence on campus or just related to sexual violence? Looks like it could add in every kind of violence on campus. I'm sorry, I've, I've stopped. I'm going to stop my screen. So, so Sarah's yeah. here. Do you, I'm just one. Do, do you might do you, be able to address that because that 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 term of art was not something that I selected. So, so did it come from education? No, it, it was it was in the house version. And uh, Senator Nicka, we're going to have Sarah Robinson from the network in this afternoon. To she's here actually. Oh, she is. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yes, so, maybe. Why, um, It'd be a good time to open this up to witnesses for the next few minutes okay. who might want to comment. Sarah, I, I'm only commenting on um, the changes from House that from Senate Education, though. Not, not that we've already voted out the bill. Sarah, go ahead. Good morning. Thank you all. Uh, Sarah Robinson, Deputy Director at the Vermont Network Against Domestic and Sexual Violence. Uh -huh. Thanks very much to the committee for being willing to reconsider this uh, section and for the good work of the Senate Education Committee um, who had some really excellent conversations about this. Um, so I can speak to uh, specifically that section, section four or subsection four. Um, I think that the concerns may be allayed by simply reflecting the language of sexual harm um, in that section, so saying sexual health education strategies for mitigating sexual harm and tertiary sexual harm on college campuses in Vermont um, or tertiary harm just generally. So the idea is to um, limit the amount of harm that happens after the incident or violence occurs. Um, and so that could be retaliation from somebody who has harmed them. It could also be uh, institutional harm or harm that people experience while going through the process of reporting. So I think that Sarah, that, yes. If, if I could just ask, um, so tertiary is, is third stage um, and primary, I understand, but what is the secondary then in that scheme? So secondary prevention would be following. Well, no, uh, there, uh, I think there's a confusion between violence and prevention. So here it's the, the primary violence, I understand. And then I know you're, you're talking about a, a, a follow on violence, but that seems like a two part thing. Whereas prevention I've always heard talked about in primary, secondary, tertiary. So I'm wondering if there's a confusion here between violence and prevention in the use of tertiary. I think you could easily use secondary violence on college campuses in Vermont there. I don't think it would change the meaning of that. And I, I think that would make sense. Okay. So you could replace the word tertiary with secondary. Um, and I think that would be fine. Great. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions about this? Is that a something that Senator Ed can look at this afternoon? Absolutely, we can. Uh, Ms. Robinson, if you're available to come into Senate Ed, uh, but I don't know how much we'll actually need you, but just on standby and we'll have uh, Ms. Childs can come in, I'm thinking 15 or 20 minutes just to talk about that and review the sunset to make sure everybody's on the same page. That would be great. Happy to be available um, if the committee needs me. Great. Um, Rebecca Turner or Matt Valerio, do you have any comments on this section? Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Thank you, Senator Sears. For the record, Rebecca Turner, 
um, head of the appellate division of the Office of the Defender General. Uh, I, I wanted to just focus on one piece of this and appreciate the opportunity to weigh in. I don't believe I've spoken to uh, this committee about our thoughts about this when it, when it first was, was uh, introduced in House Judiciary. There I shared um, concerns relating to the membership of the council and I'm happy to see that the, the most recent changes, of course, include um, a seat at the table uh, uh, by someone uh, by someone designated by the Defender General, and that that was a request, and I appreciate that. And I wanted to bring the committee's attention to page three, um, lines one, two, three, the the new proposed language, uh, highlighting um, highlighting the aspirational goal that the membership be diverse, diverse reflecting. Um, Vermont college campuses. And I wanted to share that, that I really, that I'm happy to see this language. This is in line with my earlier expressed concerns, not just that the Defender General's um, uh, perspective wasn't included in the original drafting and now it is, but where that concern really lied was just having more diverse perspectives and, and making sure that those voices were heard on this council as well. Uh, and I shared earlier before House Judiciary that we know uh, anecdotally that uh, black and brown boys and men are disproportionately accused of these offenses. And I wanted to ensure that those perspectives are brought to this uh, forum as well. And so I, rec I appreciate lines one, two, and three recognizing that diversity. I worry, however, that um, while Michelle Childs framed it as an aspirational goal, the current makeup of the membership as described in page two really prevents um, that perspective of uh, a college student or, uh, or others from the community representing, uh, you, know, you know, students who stand accused from having their voices heard. I understand that the Defender General's uh, appointee provides uh, an aspect of that, but that is a much more specific and specialized perspective working within the criminal justice system and certainly not standing in for the voices or perspectives of the students themselves. So I wanted to bring that to the table that while this is great, there really isn't a way to actually achieve that diversity on this panel as currently set up. I would recommend uh, considering expanding the number of uh, student college students who are um, can be on this council. Uh, right now it's just two. And of the two, I don't see an assurance that diversity of, of perspectives from the college students' perspectives are captured there. The second point on this was I was, I was sitting on the term diversity and uh, I think that it isn't clear what that means in this context, what's intended. Uh, certainly I could throw in what my two cents of what I think, right? Age, gender, race, ethnicity. Um, is the intent to include those, uh, those pieces of diversity, gender identity, uh, household income? Is it that we want to ensure there is representation from both public and private schools, uh, student body? Is it the non-traditional student perspective diversity? So I thought that it could uh, warrant particularly where there is such, uh, so important to capture uh, these voices um, in, in, this, in this area. So that, those are my comments for the, for the new changes uh, here this morning. Thank you. Um, I don't know how to put this delicately, but there's, I mean, it, it would be helpful to have somebody that's been falsely accused. Yeah, it would be. Um, I, I don't know how you write that in uh, as a college student. Um, yeah. Maybe because that's the show I was watching about the teenagers that were um, convicted of sexual assault and uh, gang rape at um, in Central Park um, 
It's a Netflix. Can't think of the name of it. But anyway, it, I don't know if there, um, there's a way to um, express that in ways too. If I could just speak to that, yeah. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, so I sat on the sexual um, violence prevention task force a couple of years ago. And we, I'll just be blunt, we were sort of hamstrung because the membership of that group was set up to be oppositional. And it was set up to have, um, for every person who was arguing about a, what, what I considered a positive change in the system, there was somebody in the, uh, in the oppositional chair and ultimately, we we uh, we literally our report, our report on the most important aspect of it. Um, we almost deadlocked, um, and so I, I would be very hesitant to add somebody or to try to add somebody who has or who claims to have been falsely accused, because it seems what it would what it would start is a conversation about whether this actually exists or whether the problem is false accusation rather than sexual violence on college campuses. So I was glad to see the makeup of this panel um, be composed very much primarily of people who agree that there's a problem and are working on it. Title, co title IX coordinators, uh, I think, all agree that there's a problem and they're, and they're working on it. So having or, or trying to write in that representation would include false accusation seems to me to start that discussion about is, is, there, is there actually a problem or is the problem uh, one we're creating by falsely accusing people? Um, just, my, I don't know. just my opinion on that. My, my experience in this chair tells me that a lot of people have been falsely accused of crimes that have been sent afterwards exonerated. Um, and many of them are persons that are uh, Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you that it might make that all more difficult. But, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with at least asking for a third student. Oh, no, I, I think increasing the number of students would be fine. Can I ask you uh, though, so if you, so right now um, you have on the student piece, um, the, on subdivision F, two college students, at least one of whom has lived experience as a sexual violence survivor and one who represents a campus-based racial justice organization. Um, so if you wanted to add an additional student, um, I mean, do you just wanna say three, three and then specify yeah. the two. Yeah, my, the suggestion, is... my suggestion to the education committee is to have three students, two okay. of whom are defined and one of whom could be any member of the college community. Okay, got it. As long as they're a full-time student. Sure. So could I just comment on Philip and uh, Senator Bruce's comment? I, I can see that you don't want to set up the committee to be um, a, to be deadlocked, but I do think you need to hear from those voices. I, I just think that um, we often um, do things well-meaning, but not listening to um, voices that have a different perspective or a, a different experience. And I think it's absolutely important that those voices be heard. Well, we, we do have the Defender General represented well, I, now. I, uh, I realize that, but um, I think as Rebecca Tur pointed out that um, that's very different than having um, no, just um, somebody who's lived it. We're, because we need to get to the floor yeah, at 10. Sorry. Um, I appreciate the conversation and I um, I take it that it's the sense of the committee to su 
that when the amendment is presented by the Senate Education Committee, that we would support that amendment. Yeah. Yeah. And Senator Sears, you you'll we'll review this afternoon with Ms. Childs and others those three areas that you just pointed out, and then uh, which I think Senator will be comfortable with adding a student, the sunset, and then going over uh, the change to uh, tertiary. tertiary. Um, uh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> that's more um, that came from UVM, so I, you may want to. See, no, the tertiary didn't. I thought that, that came from got the green on it. Huh? I know, but they yep. they had made a couple comments at the very oh, beginning. Okay. It was in the House all bill. Right. All right. Well, thank you all very much for a great week. Um,